the thing is, like, I'm also like not into a too pretty man. Me neither. I hate. They gotta have a little. No. <laughs> gotta have a little I, grit. My husband looks like he will like cut your head off if you even look <laughs> at him wrong. That's hot. And I'm like, <laughs> that's what I. Mm-hmm. Hey stoners! How's it going? Welcome back to Sorry We're Stoned. We're here this week with Casey Hill, Yay. special guest. Um, we're so excited to have you. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks Thank you for, for having coming. me. Of course. Um, I have like a really long intro spiel that I could give for you, but I kind of like it when guests just intro themselves. But um, Casey's a singer-songwriter and you've been in the game for a while. Yeah, you've been around the block. I've been around the (laughs) block block. a couple times, yeah. And about to put out a new album. So I would love for you to just tell our listeners like a little bit about um, like what you do, your career, like how long you've been doing it. Give us the Casey spiel. Man, where do I start? Um, (laughs) I've been putting out music since 2014. So I guess it's been like 10 years now, which is crazy. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a new album coming out May 3rd called Bug. And man, where do I start? I started out like crazy little journey uh was signed to good music to kanye west for my first record and then left that's the story (laughs) you're gonna have to go back we're gonna have to go back we'll circle back to all the things there's a lot of there's a lot of stories yes there's a lot of lore um and then after that i got out of that deal probably 2017 2018 and then have been releasing albums independently since then so So you're totally independent now i'm on um independent label now called network but the previous two records were fully independent. Wow. You learn a lot doing that. I bet. Yeah. It's very cool. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Um, well, yeah, mom, we can circle back anything you want to. Um, I would love to know because I think like a lot of your fans probably know you a little bit from like the hip hop and rap world and the features you've done. And like I know you mentioned earlier, you've been on tour with Kanye, but the album you're about to put out is a lot different. So when you first started playing music, what style were you playing? playing and like what were some of your early inspirations it's funny because i i so i grew up in phoenix and moved to la 2012 after high school and i was like i'm just gonna take a few months off of i was i was like i'll take a year off of school then go back and i'll i'll come to la for a few months and then i ended up staying um and i didn't really intend to do music but i grew up playing music i played the oboe and the saxophone oh wow that's cool (laughs) amazing can you still play those to this day yeah i played saxophone funny enough at like a couple shows recently (laughs) that's kind of awesome i know saxophone it's like it's like riding a bike oboe not as much but really uh, but saxophone yeah i can still play so yeah i was i didn't intend to do music but then just sort of fell into you know you sort of fall into where you sometimes yeah you do and um I was modeling and I met a photographer who was like, can you sing? Yeah, sure. Um, and then he introduced me to a producer and then I just started writing music. Um, and I think at that point I had no idea like what I wanted to be, which I think plays into a lot of my experience making the first album because I was young. I was 19 and grew up in Arizona. So it's like, I have no reference of exactly yeah like the music industry what it is the entertainment industry at all and um it's not like you know my family wasn't in it and I was you know just living alone in LA so I don't know I feel like I got this huge opportunity you know to like be signed to a major label to you know a huge artist and I just didn't know what I wanted Mm. yet or like who I was Mm. as a person obviously I was like 19 but also as an artist and um I think a lot of my early references that are still very much my references like the 90s alternative like the cranberries or like cheryl crow or dixie chicks like all of that stuff is like obsessed still my my references yeah Mm. but i was in the hip-hop world and Mm -hmm. stuff um and did you know stuff with travis scott or you know kid cuddy and that's amazing and i you know i love all that but i think i don't know it felt kind of at odds with like my references yeah you know Oh, I could totally see that. Mm -hmm. And I think, you know, like you said, you were here, you were young, you didn't really know who you were. And and, and, I mean, because I feel like so many young artists go through that where labels or whoever it may be want to shape them in who 
shape them into who they want them to be yeah and don't really care who they actually want to be as an artist Mm -hmm. and I feel like you can always tell when it's inauthentic you know most of the time and so I think when you're doing something that you love like it's just so fulfilling because you're doing it for all the right reasons yeah and I think I mean, you know, in hindsight, I'm like, whatever, music business is a business. Mm -hmm. Such a business. It's a business. It's a business. But it's hard when you're young and it's so tangled up in your identity, too. Totally. Where you're like, we're, you don't know yet how to like untangle those wires. Absolutely. And not take things personally, too. Mm -hmm. You know, rejection or failure or, yeah. Even if it's just like perceived failure, Mm -hmm. you know, it's like, I don't know. The the business model is just to like sign a lot of people and hopefully some things work out and mm-hmm. some things won't. And, you know, but it's like to take it so personally is just not. I, I had to learn to yeah. let go, I think, over the years. Yeah, sure. And I think just for somebody so young, I mean, it kind of does affect who you are. Mm-hmm. And like that was always the thing with all my kids in, in this business, because I think I would have really like struggled in such a way with like because you get a lot of rejection a lot constant constant rejection Mm -hmm. um so i don't think personally i could have ever handled that so i was always scared for them but yeah i think that's a huge part of it but it's amazing too that your kids like they it feels like you guys have a family unit and that feels like so grounding and helpful and like handling that rejection i think it's there's something sort of about floating off in space of like not having that either you know the reference to like come home to and be like okay this is we'll deal with this we'll handle this there's something and it's like again tale is all this time it's like so isolating Mm -hmm. and i think it's intentionally isolating sometimes because i think that's when people sort of get taken advantage of and absolutely you know yeah yes well okay well speaking of isolating you moved out here so young on your own like what was that like? Did how, did you make friends? Like, who did you call when you needed advice or when you, you know, like, who did you rely on if you were out here all by yourself? I'm just curious. It's funny thinking now about being 18 because yeah. I'm like, my little sister references 21 now. And when she was 18, I'm like, oh, my God, I was just a baby. Yeah. Like, you're a little girl. Mm-hmm. You're you're still a kid. Yeah. Yes. Um, very much. Very much still mm-hmm. a kid. But I think that there's like, I don't know, maybe just like a naivety and just like excitement of like, woo, I'll do this. And you have nothing like holding you back. You know, you have no real roots yet, except Mm -hmm. for, you know, your family. And yeah. And I think I was just like, oh, I'll go for a few months. And I didn't know anyone. I had like $1,700 in my bank account. And then the first day my car got towed. (laughs) (laughs) So that was like, that was like, you know, $500 down the drain. I was like, oh no, God. Um, But it got better. And I think I just like reached out to everyone I could. And I was modeling at the time. And I was lucky because like, uh, I want to say it was a month after I moved, I started modeling for American Apparel. And it was like, that was consistent enough uh, income wow yeah yes. well american apparel was, was it was huge, huge. then was that was like the top oh massive. my god yeah yeah 2012 That's very cool yeah and it was like we would go to the factory you know a few times a week and shoot product shots and and it was like the perfect gig where i was like okay maybe i'm meant to be here for a yes. minute mm-hmm. um and so i think that that sort of Help me. I met a lot of friends through that. That's actually. what I figured. Yeah, yeah. I met cool. a lot of friends yeah. through that. It was like a little community. Totally. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, you know, like Molly has a lot of model friends, mm-hmm. and the, it is a little community. Yeah, I love that about it. Totally. Yeah. I mean, and it was. Yeah, it was such a moment. Like yes. 2012 oh American Apparel. Oh my gosh, are you kidding? It's huge. Oh, huge. It's literally iconic. That's what. It that's is. all we it's wore. Iconic. It, the hoodie, the zip up, yeah, hoodie, the everything, the leggings, the to like me, shiny the, the lemay, the V neck t shirts. Oh, I still so have one. iconic. <laughs> and the boys wore the ones that went so deep, yes. like almost down so to their freaking belly Trey, button. Yeah. Sorry, Trace. He had so many American barrel. Oh those God. yes, V-necks. the deep deep V. It's so in every color. They yeah. were so good. So funny. The like 
It's funny. The little like, body suit. The little body yeah. suit. The deep V body suit. Oh, like and I always suit. loved the big, the sock. The, the big tube socks. socks. Oh, Miley wore so many of those uh, on, on Hannah and on so Gore. And yeah. All, I remember all of that. Yep. I feel like they're like trying to bring back the indie sleaze, which is. Yes. To me, like American apparel uh, is. It's. That, yeah, oh my God. But, like, but it's like, can you bring it back? I don't think American? you can. I don't know. It'll never be the same. Ever. No. Never the no. same. And okay, so is that how you met Kanye? Sort of, yes. Actually, I was, so they were casting for the Yeezus tour and they wanted nine real professional dancers and three p- people who were not dancers, which is me. I, oh, okay. <laughs> I can't dance. Um, and they cast through American Apparel. So Vanessa B. Croft did like all the, a lot of the choreography and like creative direction on that tour. Wow. Um. And so, yeah, they cast her American Apparel, and I ended up going on tour with him as one of the, like, backup. I can't even say backup What did you do if you weren't dancing? And you can kind of, you can find videos on YouTube, but all of us were doing the same thing. We were in this, like, full body mesh suit. Okay. Like, Ooh. like sausage casing. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, hilarious. <laughs> and, like, had it over our heads, too. Um and it was very like stationary movement. That's what a lot of Vanessa B. Croft does okay. is like these stationary women. So just you're standing. like fully like netted. Yeah. And like basically I remember, nude. Now that I, yeah. remember I can see it in my head because I do remember this. Yeah. Yeah. I remember it was short. Mm. Exactly. This was like the era he would wear the mask yeah. and yeah. stuff too. So we were, yeah, we were in the full body suits. Like, and yeah, it was very, yeah, interesting. It was, uh-huh. it was a wild experience. Yeah. yeah. Was that your first experience being on the road and being on tour? Yes. Which is so funny because then after that, I was like, touring is so fun. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah, when you're like on a bus and there's catering. Well, and like, exactly. Yeah. 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 Like, why would someone not like it? It's so easy. I would like wake up at 3 p.m. Yeah. every day. Well, especially when you're that young. Yeah. I yes. think like living out of the suitcase and yeah. everything is much easier. Uh, these, these days, I'm like, you couldn't pay me to get on a tour. Absolutely but not. Like nothing sounds worse to me than sleeping in a bunk on a bus. Like, no. Mm-hmm. Try a van. That's worse. Well, I, I've done that. I've done that too. But like when you're that age, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it ain't no thing. No. Yeah. Ain't no thing. It's just like fun. Yeah. You're just like, wow, new places. Yeah. Yep. New people. She did it with Frank and Daryl. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can relate to you a lot because like I, the, the the big difference is when I moved out here, I was young, but my family was here. Yeah. And so I did have that, thank God, because I had a really hard time making friends. Yes, she did. It's hard. Um, but I signed a record deal when I was like 20. Two or 22 probably yeah. mm-hmm. um and like dealt with a lot of that like the label wanted us to be one thing and we were we the one thing we knew was like what we wanted to be and what we yeah. weren't willing to be and it was like a lot of hitting heads with the record label over that um but you know i kind of similar like i've been on the road with my dad and then with miley on the bus and doing it yeah. the glamorous way and then traveled in a 15 passenger van for three years you know yeah um it's very very humbling humbling humbling. is the right word humbling is the right word Mm -hmm. yeah it's it'll uh cut you down yes (laughs) absolutely absolutely But, but you know you learn a lot from it and it's like yeah it makes you, I don't know, it makes being home feel that much more oh. like. Oh my gosh, yeah, of course. Oh, yeah. What a gift. Mm-hmm. I don't even, even for me now, even doing it with all the rot things. She hates the travel. I don't blame you. I just like my house too much. I don't And my blame dogs you. and my, I just like. Mm-hmm. I do too. Yeah. It's Wait. Like, are you a tour? I was going to say I'm a tour. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's, <laughs> it's funny that I do the, the job that I do being a. I'm homebody. so a homebody. Like, Same. I'm just not comfortable when I'm not. <laughs> Same. I have, I've had to get used to it and I have to do really specific things to be comfortable because I have horrible anxiety too. Ugh. So I just, I have to have routine, very spit, like when I fly, oh. if I'm missing even one of my like things. Oh, I am like a, not bougie flyer a (laughs) (laughs) i just like it gives me so much anxiety so much anxiety and like it uh, it just it like completely like makes my body feel out of control Mm -hmm. and so i need all my things (laughs) me too i'm like setting up shop in the plane and i fly like i say i fly sitting like an egg Thankfully, I'm small, so I put my I know, seat, yeah. I put my feet up, and then I put the hood, okay. and I turn into an egg, 
I'm like, no one look at me. Oh, no I, one talk to me. Oh my god! Have you seen um? Have you seen the trick? The seatbelt trick? What's the seatbelt well, trick? Have you not seen this on TikTok? So no. All the, there's like all these little tiny girls on TikTok uh-huh. that like to sit in the airplane seat like that. And apparently, if you put your seatbelt around your ankles, it helps keep oh, you in that position, and wow. like you can sleep and nap and, and without your feet like because my up. feet so always just, slip so out. Yeah, yeah. try the seatbelt trick. I'm gonna do try that. Try the seatbelt trick. I have over to because otherwise it's like then I'm crossing oh, this way. I I'm know. Do that. No, I got I'm literally a, I'm up here. Seatbelt Sin. around the ankles, girls. Yeah. I Kinda gotta go egg mode. Like Your <laughs> legs might be too long for it. The I don't seatbelt. know, but she's I'll so petite. She's so petite. We can, we can, yeah. We get the <laughs> extender. Like, yeah, you, I'm gonna need you this. need an extender. <laughs> yeah, oh. you need it for the feet. That's too uh, good. Yeah, yeah, but that is a fun trick. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. I fly next week, and uh, um, so do you. Okay. Would you prefer to get in a van or on the bus and drive over taking a flight? Yes, really. Me too. Yeah, any and, day of the week. Any day of the so week. I just hate. You know what? It really started like. COVID, mm. my extreme hatred for flying, not hatred, anxiety. Yeah. Where it was like, all of a sudden, I didn't like it before, but now I'm just so aware of the fact that I'm trapped in a tube mm. with people. So you can't think about that. You <laughs> can't let yourself go there. But you can't. You can The whole time. Yeah. I'm like, like I'm like, in a I'm tube. I'm in a little teeny, yeah. tiny, like metal tube. Like, I, I just do everything in my power to not go there in my head because the yeah. minute I go there, then I'm screwed. Then I fly a lot. Like I fly every yeah. week. Yeah. Um, and I just good. can't even think about it. I got to I got to go somewhere else. That's beautiful. You know, uh, I'm, working I could, to, I'm working. I'm working to get there. Uh, I have wish. <laughs> Out of van. <laughs> and Molly's so fe- fearful too. If there's one bump, her oh, mom just beat each other's really? fear. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. She'll make people like land the plane. Oh yeah. She will be Respect. freaking. If she if possible. Like oh, we were in Lake Como a few years ago and took it wasn't even a plane. I think it was like a just a really huge helicopter of some kind. Mm-hmm. Um, and we it wasn't not a long flight, like 30 minutes, 40 minutes. And for some reason, you know, helicopters are kind of bumpy. And for some reason, she just started to spiral about 15 minutes in and they were about to land it. She was like, you guys have to you have to land it. We have to land right now. And we were like, Miley, like, we're almost there. Everybody was like trying to talk her off the ledge and she wasn't having it. And so they were making plans to land it. Oh, my God. That's because I wasn't there. And then, <laughs> yeah, you weren't. And then suddenly I don't know what changed, but she was like, I'm OK, I'm OK. And we didn't land. But. She's so great. She wanted to just make sure that they would. She did. She just wanted wanted to just make sure that if she wanted to, they would. That they would. I respect that. You just sometimes you just got to know that there's an exit. Yes. Totally. That's what it is about flying. That's all it is. I need to know I can escape. You guys are so similar. (laughs) It's it's all about that I can't exit if I want to. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Immediate. Same thing with being in the backseat of a car. Oh, I hate it. I... (laughs) I would rather drive, be the driver oh, well, for, yeah. you know, 12 hours. Everywhere I Everywhere. Does. Everywhere. Like, Nashville, LA, mm-hmm. I drove the whole way. Even though uh-huh. there were three other people that can nope. drop. No, I can't. I have to I would it. rather. I would. It's a control thing, too. I <laughs> totally. Think. Yeah, totally. But it's, all, it's a control thing. And it's just like, if I needed to stop the car right now and escape i could stop what this is all i'm asking for you guys are so great all i'm asking for is control of everything i mean I, <laughs> it's not that hard if I'm, it, that's why like honestly helicopters for me are easier than airplanes mm. because you can land faster i yeah. respect that but more th- accessible landing way. i guess you can yeah. just land wherever there's they're a, a little theory. spooky though they are spooky because you get like one there's no backup plan no there's no, no they, they scare me a little bit. Yeah, I, yeah. I always think you can just kind of drift down. <laughs> no, just sure float down. You can just way. float. Put I the don't think so. Out. And yeah, we're I a know. lot alike. Yeah. Very much so. <laughs> okay, we've totally gotten on a tangent. But, okay, mm-hmm. because you brought up your the anxiety. Yes. Tish smokes weed for her anxiety. Mm-hmm. It really helps her a lot. Do you smoke? Or is there something else that helps you in moments of having that anxiety? There's many things. Um... For flying, honestly, hate to do it, but out of van have to do for flying. Mm. Oh, really? It's the only place I'll do it, but okay. I, I otherwise it's similar boing, boing. to Xanax. Yeah, but I think it's, it's a little more calm. Okay. okay, it's a little more chill, I think. Um, but I have to. Okay, yeah. like so a tiny dose. If I'm, I need to start doing that because, like, yeah, maybe I wouldn't be so because I I had tried like even just a half a Xanax before mm-hmm. flying before, 
but it just made me so sleepy. It makes me drowsy. It makes me drowsy, but I think that's the point, is Mm -hmm. I just need to be tranquilized. It makes me the next day. Oh, interesting. It just makes me so tired the next Mm. day that I'm always like, I don't want to do this because I don't want to feel so tired the next day. I was wondering if Ativan maybe doesn't do that because it's... It's sleepy, but I think it's supposed to be a little more... It's such a tiny dose that I take where it's just enough to like... Mm -hmm. Knock yeah. me down. Calm your mind a little bit. I, yeah. And be like, we're okay. Mm-hmm. We're okay. Maybe this mm-hmm. is what I need. Just a little. Just because honestly, I might need to be flying to Ireland next week. I know. And and I'm just like so distraught about it right at this moment. Yeah. I understand. Like distraught. Like I have like I think about it before I go to bed, when mm-hmm. I wake up, it's a whole thing. So like if I knew I had something that would just like take it off. I that's I have to. Okay. Otherwise, I'm just not well. Mm. Yes, me either. And I think <laughs> like, I I'll become not well. Yeah, she <laughs> me does. too. You like me make, too. You make yourself sick. You just do. Truly same. Sick. I know. Same. Same. Yeah. <laughs> same. Okay. So this is so nice to have somebody yeah. like that mm-hmm. feels me. <laughs> I mean, everybody's else like mother, get it together. And I'm like, but I can't. I She's can't like, right I can't now. Not. The flying. I know. I have to. I like don't like to do it really, and I don't take it any other time. But flying, right. I have to. But mm-hmm. otherwise, like. If I'm feeling anxious, like before bed, that's sort of sometimes my anxiety, mm-hmm. my, you know, just rumination time. Yeah. Um, And I will take an edible before bed because it just like yes. knocks yep. me out. Mm-hmm. Um, Yeah. Or just like I, I'm an exerciser and like I need to move. Mm-hmm. If I'm not moving, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like that too yes. a little bit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm just like, OK, I'm like. Right now, I'm like two months out of a very big breakup, and there's been a lot of days of anxiety, oh, and so I'm just like, I need to go on a hike. I need to go to the gym. I need to just like move, move, move. You but know, doing that, like getting getting your body moving, and especially I'm such like a big advocate for getting outside. Yeah. that can do like literal wonders. Oh, wonders. it changes like, everything. Changes yeah. everything. Because for me, the second I'm going through anything, I do not get out of my bed. That's what I mm-hmm. say. You get so like, and I just can't like. I just like have zero energy and mm-hmm. just feel like I cannot. Move. Mm-hmm. But yeah. so for me, like getting in bed like that and laying around all day, like it's so crippling to me. Like yeah. I just can't, I can't do it. it that gives yeah. me anxiety. Me too. It sends the idea me to a bad of just like, me too. Like yeah. I, if like I just even on a day where like if I'm tired and need like to rest, it, it I can't just lay in bed. Me too. Like resting to me has to be like going for a walk outside. Like I don't know the idea of just laying around all day oh, wow, literally it. makes me <laughs> I, want to die. I'm like, so envious of that. <laughs> Gen- <laughs> Gen- in bed rot. <laughs> See, and my best friend Kirsten's like this. Like she yeah. can be in bed all day, sleep all. She Love sleeps it. all the time. I don't sleep. Mm, she I don't, like yeah, I don't really sleep at you, all. But like just, being lazy. I don't even nap. No, all. you just lay there. I just like being in bed watching TV oh, yeah, on my nice. computer. Oh my goodness! Some chips and ice cream. <laughs> I love that. I started kind of working stoner. from bed lately, or just like, oh, I love working. <laughs> I hate it. I love it's almost it. like tricking myself because I'm yeah. like I'm not working because I'm in bed. Uh-huh. But that's where you do like your little emails or I'll like edit things, whatever. Just like computer work so funny. belongs in bed. <laughs> Kind of totally, you know, it's just like, and this also drives her crazy. I just love having on any type of background noise. Oh my god, yeah, preferably HGTV. Love HGTV's on. I'm on my computer, snacking. The dogs are, <laughs> I mean, there is nothing I love more. That I is nuts. love that. I too love. I feel like sometimes I can't focus unless there's a background noise. Oh, me too, because it, I don't. What does that mean? I don't, I don't know. Because I'm like that too. And yeah. she can I'm the exact have that Really? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. I hate having that. I need it. I'm like, there's a podcaster, there's a TV yep. show, or, and nothing that I'm actively, I'm right. not listening. At all. Mm-hmm. It's just noise. Mm-hmm. Yes. I don't know. It's so interesting. It's exactly me. That's so huh. crazy. Okay, now that we've totally taken a wide, wide, wide tangent. Uh-huh. I feel like these are things people want to This has been so to know. great. I uh, know. But people I also want to just circle back. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> so you come off tour with Kanye. Mm-hmm. And is this when you're like, well, I guess did they, did he, they then sign you after you toured yeah. with him? Yeah. So I did the first leg of that tour, which I think was like three months probably. Okay. And I had been making music a little bit before that. And I had put I put one song out just on YouTube and showed it to I think the hairstylist that was doing all of our hair. And then Kanye's barber saw it 
his name is Ivan. We love Ivan. And then Ivan showed it to Kanye. And then that it kind of just circulated. And at the same time, I started to get interest from another label and they were going to take the tour worldwide. Like it was going to it was supposed it ended up not happening, but it was supposed Mm -hmm. to be a very long, very big tour. And I was like, well, I'm not like a dancer and I have interest in my music. Like, that's really what I want to do. So after the first leg, I decided to leave and just pursue music. And and then Kanye was like, where did she go? Mm -hmm. And then they're like, you know, she's doing this. And so, yeah, and then he offered me a deal. And I, you know, at the time, I feel like, how could you say no? Right. Sure. You know, it was like 2014. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Jesus was so great. Oh my gosh. It was like that era Everything. is like, and I had an offer from another um, label, but yeah, but I, I couldn't have. Mm-hmm. There's no way. Yeah. What style of music were you doing when you put out that first song? The first song was called Experience. The style of music was, I didn't know what I was doing. I sure. think, you know, like I didn't really know mm-hmm. how to write songs. So it was just sort of like, you know, like mm-hmm. winging it. Yeah. Um, and it was very, I don't even know, what to, it was kind of minimal. I mean, just because I didn't know anything. Sure. And so it was the most like basic, you know, primary version of me as an artist, mm-hmm. I think. Um, so, yeah, it was just putting together anything I could, I think, was gotcha. the vibe. Yeah. So you signed to Kanye. Mm-hmm. Do an album, I'm assuming. Yeah, I did an EP and then an album with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then where does the Travis Scott feature come in? That was like 2015. Um, I was introduced to Travis. He was working on Rodeo and I had heard days before Rodeo and I was like, this is so great. And then my A&R at the time, Che Pope, was like, you should come in and meet Travis. They're working at this house. So I did. It was this house... In like in Bel Air, and I was like, "Whoa!" You know, they had the whole studio set up. I was like, "Wow, this is so cool!" But I was, I was still so new to doing yeah. sessions, and mm. it's so intimidating. Yeah, it is. It's so intimidating it when is. you're in those mm-hmm. rooms because there's so many people. Yep, you're like, "Where do I? Mm-hmm. What do I do here? Exactly. What do I offer?" And then right. you get into the like um, imposter syndrome of like, totally. "Do I belong here?" But Travis was very nice and showed me some stuff and was like, oh, maybe like try some stuff on this and that. And I was like, okay, cool. And then he left. I don't know where he went. I think <laughs> they like went to the club <laughs> and they just like, you know, genuinely. And they um, put me up in this room with Alan Ritter and Wonder Girl. And I was like, okay, like, what does he want? Like, what, do, what am I doing? And they're like, I don't know. Like, just do stuff and it's like okay so I just put down some like hums and like little ideas and I remember I had such a bad migraine and I was like just you know and then stressing too where I was like what am I doing you know and Travis wasn't even there and so it couldn't be like do you like this like do so eventually I just was like okay I guess I'm good I'm gonna (laughs) guess I'm gonna go (laughs) I guess I'm gonna go yeah and I just remember being like well that Nothing will come of that. Sure. Like you, I don't know about that. You know, just felt so yeah. like in my head. And I remember I, it was like rainy. I got stuck in the driveway and I was like, oh, God, <laughs> do I like knock on the door and then and be like, hey, be like, so I'm stuck. Like, I, I, that would be me. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I'd be like sitting there like. I know. I was like, yeah, yeah fully freaking yeah. out. I eventually like got out, but it was like, you know. And you feel like it's like the walk of shame. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You're like, hey. I'm stuck. Can someone get me out? But um, so that's how that came about. I was like truly, genuinely shocked when that turned into anything. When they were like, "Hey, we're gonna use this." Yeah, because yeah. I, I oh left the room gosh. being like, "Well, that that one. was shit." Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But it's a good so lesson funny. in just being like, you never know. You never know. Totally. And I feel like sometimes know. when you don't take things as seriously, yep. not that you weren't taking it seriously, but when you. Nope. When you're not, when you're like, yeah, well, whatever, like, that yeah. probably won't be anything. That's when things act totally. like, yeah. not that Miley did that with flowers, but like a little bit in the so, sense yeah. of like, she was like, oh, yeah, I'll just make the song like yeah. for yeah. me and I love it. And, and then it blew up. Totally. And like, you just never know, you I know? know. I, that's like this, it's such a funny and like frustrating thing with music or like, I don't know. I feel like music especially is this. It's like mm. when you're le- thinking about it the least. Yes. That's when the magic happens. Totally. I know. Sometimes. But then you're like, okay, stop thinking about it. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, you just, it just has to. Yeah. Happen. 
So was the Kid Cudi feature after the Travis Scott? Yes, that was after the Travis Scott thing. Did it's you funny. work with him directly or <clears throat> yeah, was it kind yeah. of the same sitch? And he was always so kind to me and like would tweet about my music and it was so nice every time I saw him. Um, so yeah, he invited me to the studio. And I remember at the time I was just in such a bad place, <laughs> like mentally with music because it was... I think it was around the time or right before my first album was coming out. And that was just like sort of a nightmare because they had the label just took forever to put it out and they just sort of sat on it for Ugh. like a year. You know, again, I know all about that. It's just yeah. the worst. Where by the time it comes out, the momentum is gone. Oh. You missed uh, your you missed the boat like a year crazy. ago. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Totally. And it's so frustrating because there's you have really with yeah, a label like that, you just you don't have control. No, you don't. There's at like all. you know what needs to happen, and you're just like just do it, and they just sit on it. And it, oh, it's so frustrating. I it's know? and I yeah. feel for artists that go through that, you know, because I've seen it you mm -hmm. know, with Molly and with mm -hmm. my kids, and it's tough to get like you hand over this piece of work that you've just like put so much into to have somebody just screw up all the rest of it. Yeah, it's really hard. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And what was crazy, too, is I I would have done things differently in hindsight, but I can't because I, I mean, I was so young. Yeah, I didn't know. But I remember at the time I had my first album finished, basically, probably had like a year and a half plus before it actually came out, maybe even a little bit more. Um, and I there was one song that I really, really did not like did not like and the a and r my a and r at good music and then some other people at def jam were like we love this song. this is like, the single <laughs> this is the first single and i was like classic you sure uh -huh. i don't like this song and they're like no no no. this is the first this is a hit and i just didn't like it but i was like well they must know better mm -hmm. i don't they, they don't, don't. They don't <laughs> I mean, that's what you learn of course yeah. but i was like they must know you know, I'm not going to argue with them because also, what? I mean, where am I going to get? Exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, sh sure, we'll do this one. So frustrating. It is. And so I put it out, and then like, pretty, very soon after, we got an email like from Kanye that was like, "Let's meet," and he was just like, "I don't like this song at all," and I was like, "I don't either." Mm -hmm. And my AR was there, silent. Didn't say anything. Um, and then he, Kanye said to me, I like was playing him some of the album. And he said, yeah, like, I like these songs, but I think you just need to reproduce the whole album and make it cooler. That was what he said. Oh, boy. Just make it cooler. Make it cooler. So I did. Well. In hindsight, I mean, what, how do you not do that? You have to. You have to. Especially your mind would always be like, I yeah, think, you know, mm -hmm. it's funny, though, because I go back and listen to the the demos or not even demos, but the versions of the songs that I was like going to put out. And I'm like, oh, that feels so much more true to mm, what I always. was as an artist. Mm -hmm. Always. And it had all the same references, yes. you know, like the 90s alternative, the Cheryl Crow, the like yep. all the stuff that I listened to. It's like there was a lot of that in there. If they would just let the artist be the artist. Yeah. It would just change everything. Why are you signing I, them if you don't want that exactly. artist? Exactly. You know, it's like. Yes. I think that's what it is. Just know what you're signing. Well, and you're... like Molly, I uh, um, manage her with somebody. His name's Jonathan Daniel at Crash. And we team up on her. And the biggest difference he made that I always saw in Molly is like, people are like, oh, what, what was, how have you managed her different? He goes. I just stepped back and said, mm. you do you. And then let me help you put all the produce, like people that you should work with. Let's talk about yeah. all that. And, but you do what you want to do creatively and musically. And all of a sudden, here she comes, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and then flowers hit. But I mean, it was our first record with JD and it was just like so different because we just let her go. Mm -hmm. You that, know? Yeah. And that's so beautiful that you can do that. Yeah. And it, I think what you get from that is like so much better than if you totally because otherwise I feel like you can sense the tension. You can't when it's yeah, not that. I totally. Well, I also that. think when a label and the non-creatives, right, that are part of the team, start telling you what to be and what to do, 
You start overthinking totally. every yeah. single decision Everything. you're making. Yeah, because yeah. like she said, it's like, oh, wait, am I right or are they right? Yeah. Or, well, they should know. Like, this is what you just totally overthink mm-hmm. it. Yeah. And you realize no one really knows. Not at all. Nope. No one knows. No. Everybody's just faking it until they make I it. Know. That's what I learned. Like, <laughs> they don't know. <laughs> Anyone that says that they know. That, no. They lying. Do not know. Totally. And lying. I yeah. agree. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Wow. Yeah. That's so wild. All right. So you put out did you put out the album? I put out the, the album. The cooler album. The cool the cool the version. Cool version. <laughs> yeah, the cool the version. The cool version of the album. Uh-huh. Um and then when did you part ways with Kanye? This is a funny story. It's not funny. <laughs> it's, it's funny, funny it's now. Funny it's now, funny not in hindsight. Time. It's yeah. really funny in hindsight. So I <laughs> <laughs> after that I had like the perfect storm too of label nightmare. It's got to be one of maybe the worst major label stories in. I I have yet to find one that's more oh, you know wow. troubling. But mm-hmm. um, so the week my album came out, it was bad timing too. Was the week that Kanye had a very public mm. breakdown, mm-hmm. and Def Jam was like they got a new president, and so the oh, yeah. whole staff was turning over. Yeah, mm-hmm. <clears throat> like that uh, exact time. This is kind of what happened to me. Yeah, so at you Interscope. have at that point you have no one to right. go to. Nope, mm-hmm. no one. They didn't want to give money for tour support for like you know they're like no we've already spent too much on this mm-hmm. like go make another album. It's oh, like interesting. <laughs> interesting because I just gave you an album. Mm-hmm. Um anyway, so they were they wanted to take the next option. They're like, Kanye wants to take the next option. I was like, okay, you know, I was just gonna like do what I had to do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And but then they didn't pay me. So I was like, are you taking the next option or mm-hmm. are you not? Uh, interesting. Yeah, interesting. So they were like, well, Def Jam was like, well, we can't, we're not the ones who can do that. We didn't sign you, Kanye did. So he's the only person that can Give you. let you out or keep you in. Yeah. So I was like, okay, I got to go to him. But at the time, he got rid of email. He did not oh have an assistant. God. So I was like, how, how do I reach him? How do I reach this man? And he was doing Sunday service. This was mm-hmm. like the start of Sunday I service. That. So I would go to Sunday service every weekend and it felt like going to someone's wedding and then trying to get them to like sign something. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I was like going to Sunday service every weekend and then afterwards would be like, that was so like, that was beautiful. Can we talk? Can we talk? <laughs> can we, can we talk? Is... Yeah. For, wow. for months. For months did no. that. Yes. And then finally, you know, because he would be like, yeah, sure, <laughs> let's talk. But then, you know, we'd go off somewhere oh, else. Yeah. And I'm like, how do I just get him oh. to sit down? Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, totally. Yeah, like, oh, and, yeah. and no one knew. Yeah. Because I also, my manager at the time, um, like day-to-day manager, came from that world, too. And she was like, I don't, I don't know. Oh, wow. Like, I don't know who to Honey, I know to. the whole, I know all about that. <laughs> uh-huh. Thing, yeah. Top mm-hmm. of thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Just, like, impossible to catch. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I did that for months, wow. and then finally he was like, "Come to rehearsal Friday," and I'm like, "Okay, perfect." Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, "Where's, where's, re- where's, re- where's <laughs> oh, rehearsal? No. Where's rehearsal?" And I, I like go through multiple channels to find out when it is. He's not even there. Whatever. I eventually sit down with him, and was just like, I, you know, and obviously was. Blamed it all on Def Jam, too, because I was like, I don't know anyone there. Like, what am I doing here? Yeah. You know, I have another record that I've made that I'm really proud of that that I was really proud of. Yeah. And I was like, I don't want to give it to them. Mm. You know, like, I I don't. And mm-hmm. he was like, OK, well, why are you asking me? And I was like, eh, they said you're the only person that can let me go. Like, it's your label. And I was like, you can just send a text to anyone. Yeah. Your manager, like one anyone. Text. A text. Just one. And just say Casey is free to go mm-hmm. basically mm-hmm. and he did oh, wow goodness. yeah and then i was free amazing and he yeah it was an interesting i um, mean that's meeting. insane insane literally i feel like that those months like took years off of my life oh, i'm mm-hmm. sure yeah i'm like we lost 10 years probably in, that, <laughs> in those months the wow. stress oh the total stress I'm yeah sure. yeah it was crazy mm-hmm. and then yeah while i was there he like <laughs> it was he's an interesting guy yeah <clears throat> i don't i don't think i've ever I've been in the same room with them a lot, but I don't mm-hmm. think I've ever actually 
talk to him directly. I have a couple. You have a couple. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think I always felt so weird around him too because I I feel like I am a little weird sometimes or not weird, but I just am like such a not a small talky person. Mm -hmm. I'm not into the like cool LA. So if I'm talking to someone, I'm like, let's let's talk. That's me. Totally. (laughs) I do not do the just surface thing. Mm -hmm. I can't. I can't either. Networking. I can't. I can't. I it's terrible. I can't because I'm just like we I either like wanna, yeah. I want to talk or mm-hmm. not. Yeah, because we either connect or we don't. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm the exact same way. I just and it I with him in a lot of that world. I guess I always felt like kind of a weirdo. Yeah, because mm. I it's so about like being cool and I. Right. And there's so many people who do that, like doing yeah. that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. That's what I'm like, like, uh, this is like, I just don't want to be here. You know what's no. funny? I'm so glad you said that. Because you know what's so so crazy? Like, uh, so I used to be in a band. I've done this whole dog and pony mm-hmm. show. And I DJ now. Mm-hmm. Now I'm in this DJ world. And it is so not like that. Really? The DJs are just so much. They're all dorks. They're just a bunch mm. of dorky, mostly guys. Yeah. Bunch of dorks that somehow got famous. And it's to- it's totally different. All that pretentious shit. Yes. Most of it does not exist in the DJ world. Really? It's really, huh? really refreshing. Should I be a DJ? Maybe. 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 Everyone's doing it. You should <laughs> jump on board like, now. Please. <laughs> um, I do. I, I have that that thought a lot. Especially when I'm on TikTok. I'm like, God, everyone's doing this. Like, is there mm-hmm. is there even space for me to keep doing this? Like, everyone's doing it. Everyone can be a DJ now. Um, but I do think I got in on it early enough that, um, like in a good way that they're, that I've made a space for it, which is great, but it is very refreshing that I, every major big player DJ in the space that I've met is so kind. Mm. Um, everyone's so nice, so chill, so laid back. And there really isn't that like, cause you're right. Like in most of the music industry, Ugh. there's everybody just acts like they're the shit because they yeah. feel like they have to, to keep up with it. And like it's being cool is so important, like such a big deal and like whatever. And it's exhausting. It is. And so it's not exhausting. real. Like it's just not no. real, you know? It's um, like, but it's like kind of freeing to let people like that go mm-hmm. and be oh, like, that's it. not my space. Like yeah. that's not for me. Mm-mm. I would rather just like do what I do, make the music that I want to make, have the friends that I, you know, love. And if that means like that it takes me longer to do what I want to do or that I whatever end up somewhere else i would so much rather do that totally. than the like totally. all the other shit yeah i'm with you. i'm the exact same way mm-hmm. yeah it's just like it's not meant for me then yeah if i have to do that oh exactly it's it's just not that's for someone else because it's so soul crushing mm-hmm. because the thing is like i could i could do a lot of different jobs mm-hmm. if i don't do this, do mm-hmm. music. Oh, and totally. Yeah, I would rather do another job than do that. That. Me too. Yeah. That, like, I, I'll i go back to school and, like, yeah. do anything else mm-hmm. than overdoing that. Yeah. Well, it seems like you're doing great. I know. Thanks. I was going to say, because <laughs> I'm obsessed with Juana. Well, yeah. So, yeah, I was going to kind of, yeah, mm-hmm. kind of then transfer to, like, not to, like, I don't know if you want to call it a new era, but, like, you're putting out this new album, and I and it's, I feel like you're, even though it's a new era, it's actually the original yeah, era. Yeah, the yeah, OG yeah. era. Before you, before you took is. a little surfacing. I took, yeah. You, I, you took a little detour I took a detour. For a second. Okay. Well, as we do in our 20s, yeah, right? We do. Like, we do that. We do that. But That's what our 20s are for. You should. Yeah. And yeah. if you don't, you'll end up doing it later, which is never good. Mm-hmm. I'll probably still do it later. Yeah, I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll do fun. another. <laughs> like, no, you she took a, you know, she took a hard like, detour I, in her 40s. Yeah, I took a hard one, so it, and it was great. <laughs> really? Okay. I'm down for Honestly, multiple detours. looking back at the time, it probably wasn't. Looking back, no. I'm like, Wait, yeah, you did it. You had to do it. You, you just did it. it. Like, so honestly, good. I even got the tattoo. She wants the fly. Oh, my gosh. She's I'm talking about this midlife crisis. I'm upset. Now. Wait, you got that it's in your forty. She 40- wants the fly. And I'm like, everybody, I'm like, everybody, they're like, do you ever want to have that removed? I'm like, no. It's like, honestly, it represents such a time where I was just like, it's so funny. Mama. Where she wanted to fly. I am obsessed with that. Even though she didn't, she wanted. She didn't. <laughs> she wanted to figure it out. She's flying now. She's flying now. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm dead at the irony of <laughs> saying she wants to fly. But she did it. She actually, she used up to add a dozen. Oh my God. She doesn't want to. She wants to drive. Cross it out. She wants to drive. True. That is so good. good. Oh, that's, that's funny. really funny. Oh, that is so good. But I am blind now. Yeah. Not uh-huh. on planes, but I'm blind. <laughs> Figuratively, emotionally, yeah. Yeah. mentally, yes. Yes. spiritually. Totally, yeah. Or maybe well, I should. Say I'm driving down the window. Oh That's what it is. It's more of that. It's that. It's that. I want to just drive up the 101 freeway with the windows down, mm-hmm. singing my little heart out. That's the you vibe. Get it. Oh, no. I love that. And her okay, lifted forerunner. And my lifted freaking oh, forerunner. I love that. Like that's <gasps> yeah. that's goals. I know. I, 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 sometimes they're like, "Mom, you need a new car." I'm like, "Why?" <laughs> no, I am. Every no, time I'm it's here. my redneck roots, and I love <laughs> I'm it. Obs- Obsessed um, with that. Yeah. That's perfect. Yeah. That's so I love funny. That. I love it too. Okay, well, tell us a little bit about the new album. Um, Lana has posted about uh, it. We and love which her. she's Lana's biggest fan. I um, love that. She's just an angel. Yeah, she's just, like saved my life. Really? Aww. I just love her. I, yeah. Have you met her? Yeah, yeah. I I am good. Her sister is one of my best friends. So oh, and we've shot the she shot the album artwork for this album and for my second album. So we've been oh that's cool friends Amazing. for a while Aww. and lana's just she is an angel everything mm-hmm. yeah i i love her i she, li- i like listen to her more than any other artist she does yeah i love Constant. that i love that yeah. yeah she's the best and yeah i'm very grateful for her support and i think she's just like one of the truest bluest people and just artists everything you can yeah. tell it's like yeah. again like it's just this authenticness that shines through totally with her. Yeah. Um, never trying to be someone she's not like, that's why I love her so much. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I feel like just being around like that, you know, like, uh, Chuck, her sister, you know, is like one of my best friends and like sort of being around them in LA mm. has been such a grounding force. And I feel like that's felt. Do they live here? Yeah. They do. Yeah. And I feel like that's been like family. That's in great. LA, in a way, you know, just yeah. to mm-hmm. like have friends that you're like, oh, you don't play into the I want stuff. Isn't it great? Yeah. Oh, you, it, that's so rare. Mm-hmm. So rare. So rare. So rare. And I'm like so grateful to find, you know, anyone like that. But yeah, I think that the, like that whole family, like them as people, I'm just, I love them and adore that's them. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Would you ever collab with Lana? I mean, obviously but i feel like it's sort yeah, of like yeah, it's like so see i'm too like close. that like like if i always like don't want to ask or like even reach out to people that mm. like my famous friends because i don't want yeah. them to think i want mm-hmm. anything from no them. you're like you but if it was her idea yeah yeah if it was totally i would do that i would also like do literally anything for yeah. any of them any like i would drop my life if Aww. any of them needed anything Aww. so i'm like yeah, I would just like never. But honestly, from what I've heard and what we've talked about with your music, like there, it that would be a beautiful collab. Mm-hmm. I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, yeah. Tell us about your new record. Okay, it's called Bug, um, which was my it was still my nickname that my mom calls oh, me. Cute. Cute. Yeah, and I think it's a lot of like yeah, re- like what you said, kind of like returning to myself and yeah. and the influences that I listen to and like, um. Yeah, I grew up in Arizona and like listened to a lot of the like 90s alternative and like just like, you know, love like the 90s like country music Me and like too. 2000s country. It's just so like Dixie it Chicks was and so Faith good. Hill, uh, like all I that know. stuff. It was too good. We Has anything been better? No. It was the best. The best. Mm-hmm. Shania and Trisha Mary and, and Faith oh, Trisha and Leanne Rimes and your, all that stuff. Uh, love. So good. And so a lot of it also just like as a songwriter. The last three records really have just been like essentially only listening to country music as lessons in songwriting, basically. Mm. Like basically country music and like Peter Gabriel and like <laughs> a few other things, um, you know, and like Cheryl Crow and like all that stuff that I just is so. Yeah. It's just good songwriting. It's great songwriting. Great songwriting. So it's like focusing on the songs before anything else. Mm. And then. Um, digging deeper into like the production I feel like with each album I've made I've just gotten deeper and deeper into the production of it yeah. where it's like the last record my third record was I recorded all my own vocals and like did a lot of the production and arranging then 
And then this one was just more of that. And I don't know. I think that that's so important, especially for female artists. Absolutely. Just like the biggest advice or asset you can have, I think, is to know how to produce. A million percent. You just have to. Molly is so involved Mm -hmm. in the production in such a major way. Mm -hmm. Because I think that that's the best way you can communicate your vision. Yep. And your ideas, even if it's just sitting at the computer and putting a really sort of rudimentary version of a sound that you want to hear, or like here the drums should sound like this, this, you know, let's get a snare that does this or, you Mm -hmm. know, whatever it is to be able to communicate that. And Molly, she's been with her boyfriend now for like about three years. Crazy. And they work so well together. And it's one of my favorite things to like be with them and see them kind of do that mm-hmm. together mm-hmm. Um, because he is a drummer, but he is an amazing producer as well. Amazing. Um, And it's like just really cool when I see Molly like really know her shit you yeah. know, and be able to communicate with the producers and say in that what role, she wants yeah. and mm-hmm. in that role. It's just really cool. It's so special. It's like, <laughs> it is. I think that, yeah, it's like such a, I don't know, just such an asset. It's funny working with someone you're dating. I did that for a long time. Mm. And I, this relationship I got out of and like- I was going to say, is that the recent breakup one? That is that one. Mm. We were together like six and a half years. Oh, and yeah. wow. I know. It's that's crazy. a whole nother episode. That's a whole about. other <gasps> lifetime. I'm yeah. Not, wow. I'm, that's a long time. It's a long time. Mm-hmm. I'm like, at that point, you're like practically married. Um, mm-hmm. That was crazy. But we, we worked together a lot and it was very difficult. But I think mm-hmm. we both learned- so much did he work on this new album no 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 but there's one song that we wrote together in like 2018 i think that had been sort of Mm -hmm. spinning around for a while and finally i was like okay need to finish it yeah you know so i went on on this one went on this one yeah wow so six and a half years (laughs) so long (laughs) i know so like was it something like bubbling for a while that you knew or did something happen that it's funny it was bubbling because now i listen to the songs and i'm like oh no i wrote a breakup album like before <laughs> you but, before the breakup yeah because you always kind of know you do mm-hmm. and i don't think i was ready to admit any of it even in like therapy mm-hmm. would be like it's good mm-hmm. totally. we're great our relationship is like very you know adult and mature and like yeah i don't need much from him but like that's fine and like i'm not very needy i'm low mate you know and just you like talk yourself out of everything Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah and i but i wrote songs about it i think and i would tell myself i'm like oh this is me being like petty you know in the songs or like being dramatic Mm -hmm. it's like no i was just being honest honest. yeah 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 so that was your safe place to be honest Mm -hmm. yeah and i think it's I don't know. You can kind of when you're like writing songs, it's easy to be like, no, this is just like I'm going to like, you know, make it feel a little more intense. And it's like, no, it was just intense. That's how it was intense. That's how I was feeling lonely Mm. and like abandoned in it. You guys. Yeah. This is insane. Yeah. We are the same person. She needs to stay for card night. Yeah. I'm serious. I'm to get I'm into in. some of this. I'm I mean, in. this is crazy. Yeah. 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 I know. Mm. Yeah. It's, it's, and it's it hard. sucks to feel that way. It sucks to feel that way. And it also sucks so much to get out of it. Yeah. Oh, it's so painful. I was just saying, like, this week has been so bad. Oh, we're like we're like two months out of it, so I'm so wow. very fresh. That's but like very fresh. It's so fresh. And I it's... was still in a complete mental breakdown. Mm-hmm. I've just had to keep moving. <laughs> yeah. I was, like, See, busy. that's what I do. That's I keep yeah. moving. I have to keep moving. So, yeah. I go to bed, and that I was keep not moving. a good thing when that no. happened. I mean, I think honestly, thank God that it's like the timing. I like have an album yes. to put yeah. out because otherwise, yeah. I'm like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's not easy. I don't. And, know. I mean, it's just like six years. There's just so much of like. I mean, it's just such a part of you is like, yeah, mm -hmm. it's just so different. So different. Mm -hmm. I'm like the last time I, you know, dated someone, I was like, you know, before that I was like 22. Mm -hmm. It's like a whole other lifetime. Um, You know what, though, just to put a positive light on this, mm -hmm. I do feel like coming into your 30s. Yep. Yeah. On your own. Yeah. Is going to be really great for you. And your 30s like are just so much better. 
It's just so much better. You're getting older. (laughs) 30s are amazing. Even I think later 30s. I've always told you that. I don't know. I really loved my like early to mid 30s a lot, but you're only going up from here, girl. Let me just tell you. Like, yeah. This will probably end up being, I know it's so painful now, but probably yeah. the biggest blessing oh, in disguise. Totally. I know. And you know what? I have weeks. Like I had a couple weeks before this week mm-hmm. where I was like, I feel good. Like I feel lighter. Mm-hmm. I feel more vibrant. Oh, you know, yeah. where you're just like, oh, I think I was sort of like, I don't know, dimming myself, but also doing so much in service of of him i think a lot of women happy. do that yeah. totally. a lot of and you do don't that. realize because mm-hmm. you're like no i'm independent and i have my own life i have my own friends i don't need that much but then yeah. you're like it's so like crazy when you're out of it yeah like it's just mm-hmm. i'm not gonna go on my dom kid <laughs> 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 yeah. i'm remarried and <laughs> i i do not feel like i don't feel like i'm of service to him like, yeah and, like or he like it's just so like my eyes have been open and everything that I felt and was feeling, you know, like you said, like the heaviness and the, all the things like it, it that was real. And yeah. I just like, I was so lonely. The loneliness is so interesting because I have so many friends, you know, and you have family and everything, but it's like a profound loneliness mm-hmm. totally. where you're like, oh, I am like giving. Oh. And like, what do I get mm-hmm. to? feel replenished yeah and to feel like and it's funny because i think like as women too i like it talking to friends and stuff i'm like what i need from someone is so in my eyes so simple and so small thing the smallest thoughts i'm like just being nice and just bring like <laughs> what a concept what a, like maybe you have dinner ready yeah one night what a concept maybe yeah. like you do something without like me asking for it just like maybe you get the flowers for the house this week instead of me absolutely but it's and the worst the the feeling like when i ended up actually being alone like i really wasn't lonely. Mm-hmm. i was but gonna say that it's like, so crazy how you can feel yeah. so much more lonely with, with someone with the wrong person yeah that is yeah. F- filling you up mm-hmm. but it's i think the scary part of like leaving then is then you have weeks where all you can remember are the good things. Oh, then I you know. Have weeks where all you can remember are the bad things. Like, mm-hmm. let this Dr. Amon tell me. The past always presents itself better than it was. Yeah. Mm. Like, something about the future, that's why you need to stay in the present. Mm. And he was like, because always, when you reflect on the past, you always are like, oh, yeah. it was this. No. Yeah, well, we automatically yeah. just, like, see the high- highlight totally. reel yeah. in our minds, you know? Yeah. Totally. And the worst thing you can do is go through your fucking yeah. photo album. Because oh. it's only good memories in there. Exactly. Yeah. And you trick yourself into thinking like, oh, it was just so good. Was so yeah. g- no. No, don't do it. I had to turn off, you know how your iPhone's like memories. Yes. Yeah. I Fuck had to turn those things. Off. I, 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 I turn yeah. that off too. I yeah, know. But it's hard. Photos <laughs> yeah. are really like the devil in that sense it of is. like, it can really trick you into thinking like it was yeah. better than it was. And totally. It's that uh, Casey Musgrave song, Camera Roll. Oh, do you know uh, that song? That, that song one is so hit good. me hard. Yeah. Yeah. Same. That was my favorite song on that album. Love me Casey. Too. Mm-hmm. Me too. Throw out the Casey too. I love, I love Casey. Casey. Talk about somebody else that's like, she's just real. Her yeah. music is yeah. just real. She's the best. Just, and, you know, yeah. she just does Casey, which I love. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. She's so good. So good. She's so good. Amazing. Um, well, we could probably continue talking about the breakup for hours, but yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Can, we, can, can we play come back? Can she yeah. come back? Yeah, yeah, but let's, um, <laughs> if we have time, can we play a little game? Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> what? what is it? Mom, you act like we don't do this every time a week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Um, do you have your little weed over there? I thought it was a new game. No, <laughs> I have a little weed. A new yeah. one. Okay, so no one told you about this game is called Truth or Toke, and it is okay. what it sounds like. Mm-hmm. We'll ask you questions, and you can either tell the truth or you can toke. Or you can do both. Or, or you, you can, can do both. both. I do, Which I is what do she both. does. That's exactly do what both. she does. Yes. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, this is a good one. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the craziest, coolest person that has ever slid into your DMs. Either one of you all. No one. No one? I think I, I think like the word was out so, for so long that I was in a relationship. Oh, yeah. Because you were But it doesn't even have to be like it, that in that sense. Like, has anybody like slid in and said like, hey, I'd love to work with you or I love your music or like anything like that that. Is um, cool to you? I'm trying to think of my DMs. I love her. She is me. <laughs> <laughs> because the only thing that I would think of is like, 
Dom, like who's lit in the body? Yeah, I know. It's like, <laughs> not I know. like a DM, but like who's I'm like lit working. in the I don't know. I'm not sure. Okay, um, let me th- let me marinate. Like, Maybe I'll think about who's it. Who's you? Like t- two friends. Like, I went to see two friends DJ at the win mm-hmm. like the night before me, and they yeah. like hit me up and were like, "Oh, so great to meet you. We should do something together." You know, like that's cool to me cooler than thinking about some fucking guy to go on a date you know what i mean we're talking about (laughs) that you know who hit me up not that long ago or like i don't know is sarah samuels who i love the designer oh see there you go that's cool i got a text after my second album that was like is this casey is this still your number and i was like who is this um and it was the weekend. It was Abel. Oh, and he was cool. like, I loved your album so Aww, much. That is so That sick. was cool. Yeah, that was really cool. cool. I mean, jeez, that's amazing. Yeah, that one was really cool. Mm-hmm. So that I'll take, not a DM, but. Better. Just a very, than a, a very nice compliment. Yeah. Text. Yeah. That's super cool. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. I'll take that. All right. Love that. Um, What is the wildest horror story you have um, from being out on the road? So it was at the end of the Yeezus tour. There were 12 dancers and it was like the final show in Toronto. <laughs> and they were like, after tour the show. Pranks. Huh? Was it a tour prank thing? No. Oh. No, it was after the show. They're like, come to this club. And so it's all the crew tour or whatever. And then some other people that had gone to the show. And there was one person. Oh, boy. A very famous person. Mm-hmm. Very famous man. Who came to the club and i think i it's so funny but um they were like bringing all the dancers over they're like um can we have all the dancers over here and he's like in this fur coat Ew. with his friend <clears throat> and basically had the crew like line up all the dancers oh jeez! so he could like pick you and are... then i'm not kidding i have I'll, an I'll idea who this is. Is too. i want to I'll tell you. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you it is. Okay, okay. We'll, we'll, yeah. we'll circle back and, to that. Yeah, but that one was creepy. Uh-huh. Wow. Yeah. So, like, yeah. Yeah, Ew, yeah. yeah no. Yeah. Yeah. Tour, there's the crazy shit that can there go down really on tour. Is. There was crazy stuff from mm-hmm. that. Like, oh, well, it's just that stories tour. that I will remember. Oh, mm-hmm. I bet yeah. on that tour it was extra crazy. Mm-hmm. crazy. I can only I imagine. Can't yeah. imagine. My yeah. tours now, mine, mine are like, Tame. So calm. Yeah. It's like all women. Mm. And Molly's literally laying on a Zen blanket. Literally yeah. with the lights out and like, like some ambient playlist. Yeah. Medi- and we're like, girl. I like we're- don't drink on tour because yeah. I it gives me anxiety and I'm like, she no, I gotta either. be like mm-hmm. up. Yeah. And Adam. Mm-hmm. No. No. Oh, yeah. So now it's like no, I know. I mean, yeah. my, the running joke for me is like, everyone's like, so what are we doing after your set? And I'm like, oh, I walk straight from stage to my bed. To bed. Like straight oh, to bed. We're going totally. to bed. <laughs> like they're, I'm off at three o'clock. By three o five, I'm in bed. Oh, I'm in bed. Yeah. yeah. There's totally. no like. There's there are no activities. No zero <laughs> in between. So funny. I know. It's so different. <laughs> I know. It's so true. Okay. okay Mar- here's the next. What's your c- current celeb crush? I should have thought about that. <laughs> no, <laughs> opportunities are are, are <laughs> opportunities are rising. No, no, I'm probably blushing. Yeah, you are. <laughs> 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 that means you are thinking of someone no I feel. i'm like literally drawing a blank because i don't know if i've ever had like a really strong celebrity crush i haven't i married him <laughs> i love that for you i'm obsessed with that isn't that I'm fucking like, crazy it is and i need to manifest that uh, you do I, like, I need to have a more clear do. vision of what i want <laughs> i know i think it's still hard like coming out of relationship where you're still just like yeah. floating in space and i'm like i need to next i need to date like an anesthesiologist or something honestly Love that. Yeah. like although i don't know that sounds so boring it does sound boring yeah yeah but like but it just the idea of it is kind i know of, yeah I know. Know. It's like fun but then the reality is like but like who's like for but, me i'm like what would i have in common with an anesthesiologist like absolutely they, they love me <laughs> like, I mean, we have yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah that's true that they're obsessed with me okay. no i but that's the thing point. is like a lot of celebrity men or like famous men whatever i'm just like i'm also like not into a too pretty man me neither i hate like, I have a little i've got no <laughs> gotta have a little I, grit my husband looks like he will like cut your head <laughs> off if you can look that's at him wrong hot. and i'm like <laughs> That's what I'm like. That's hot. But Mm -hmm. like, biggest no no, like a model. Oh, Oh, no. Out of here. Zero chance. Or like an actor. Sorry. 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 You know what? 
he is, and we talk he's about. He's the this. least actor of all he's actors. Very, he's, it's weird. He is like a man. To the yeah, moment. and there is none of that, like going and schmoozing with people or wearing his pants where his ankles show. Like none of they, that. Men that wear pants where their ankles show, and they never wear socks. I was gonna say, them. if you're not wearing it's, socks, oh it's an immediate no. It's, it's so, an immediate it's like no. Bachelor core. Yes, like, it is. Exactly. You're going on the Bachelorette with your if yes, right they, they all do. Showing his ankles. With what no is socks with that? And a loafer. I'm, no, I, I just, I'm out. <laughs> out. Same. That is like the biggest, it. biggest that yeah. that. I shouldn't say this. Yes, you should. Yeah, you should. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should. <laughs> I shouldn't say this. Okay, that and adjacent to that, I say this only because of recently, mm. I recently had an encounter. Mm. Men who, and this isn't often, but men like with flip flops or with dry feet or something. Uh, have I not always said this? Always. I have oh. like, I, I don't know anything more repulsive to me than men in flip flops. Oh, men, the worst flip flops for me are those leather ones. Like the rainbow ones? Ah, yeah. I fucking hate flip-flop those. Things. I mean, I fucking hate those. Like, honestly, so disgusting. I agree. Yeah. And but they, you know who used to wear those all the fucking time? Yes. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but that's also, as someone who's from Arizona. <laughs> oh, but they're the, everywhere. Oh, the minute you touch down oh. in Phoenix Sky Harbor, <laughs> the dogs are out. You look around. It's I can't. all. Okay, but it's, here's my thing. I don't I don't really even like slides on men, but like ew. but at least wear a fucking pool slide. <laughs> yeah. Not a flip flop. Like, like, no, like an Adidas. Like an Adidas maybe. Fine. Okay. I prefer them with socks. But with like socks. Yeah. But but the it's socks like but a baggy sweat. If you gray. have to go to the beach or the pool, no. No flip flops. No flip flops. No slides over. Don't do I, it. Honestly, Dom wears his converse. Oh yeah, I was gonna Good. say. And why can't guys just wear Good. vans yeah. to the pool, or, or wear like a Birkenstock, a slip on, yeah. like anything, anything. anything else. A rainbow flip flop. Those should be illegal. I, I mean, I they agree. all need to be incinerated. I agree. It's I'm like with that you. brand needs to go away. <laughs> away. <laughs> Horrendous. So we're, yeah. we're never getting sponsored by yeah, Rainbow. But Rainbow, I, I was kidding. I actually love your products. <laughs> Me too. Me too. We le- we're JK. I, I have so many. Do they make anything else? Yeah, we don't even know. Probably like know. hats. Probably like yeah. hats. And they're fine for like some people. <laughs> they're fine for some. They're fine if you're still living in Arizona. Because it's yeah, hot. It's a hot. I get it's it. Hot, I get it. T- you know what? But I say this. I, I grew up wearing flip flops so much that I think Oof. my my toe or my big toe oh, and my index toe are kind of like this. Oh, my God. Because Wait. I grew up wearing them. Yeah. I'll See, I, I hate them. You like them. You hate them. I don't. I don't. Just I don't own any flip flops. I don't anymore. Yeah. I do not like I love them. a slide. A slide, the slides yeah. are good. Yeah. A slide's good. Yeah. It's really different. Wow, that was yeah. One hell of a that tangent. was good. Yeah. We went from celeb <laughs> crush is, to oh, awful. Yeah. Yeah. we went from celeb crush to that oh, conversation. Yeah. Wait, That's so, too wait, funny. I th- feel like I did have a new celebrity crush. Well, Shoot. we need to know. You know the country singer Riley Green. He's like the hottest person I've ever seen. My dream is somebody with no social media. That's my absolute. But dream. I have been scared on them. this. You like an? I, I hate social. Media. Yeah, oh, no, oh, yeah, I know. I <clears> know. <throat> yeah, like. Guys that take selfies of themselves and post it, what, what? the fuck? You what? Guys. Like the idea of a guy by himself standing there taking his own photo makes me want to no. actually vomit. Like mm-hmm. honestly, Dominic, <laughs> I Dom, Dom talks about it all the time. Uh, uh-huh. Like he was like, can you imagine me be like, hey, yeah, <laughs> it's man, so I'm crazy. just coming to you from the gym. Oh, like, God. Uh, I mean, it was like so yeah. absolutely insane to me it's that a- men do this. Mm-hmm. They and, do. A lot of them do. do. Which is also why I'm like, I don't think I can get on the apps because oh, they no. all do that. Yeah, because I guess you kind of have, have to. to. It just does. not I'm like, it has. We have to meet in the wild. Yeah. When I'm ready. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm not sure. Yet, but like in the wild one day. Yes. Yeah. We will meet. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I love that. Hilarious. That's too good. <laughs> um. You have one next, but I'm going to go anyway. What's oh. the craziest excuse you've ever made to get out of a date? Oh, seeing as I haven't been on oh, a yeah. date in so long, I don't know if I ever have. If I, I would never make an excuse. I would just say I can't. Can't go. I'm very direct. Yeah. You know, like, and I'm not a good liar. Mm-hmm. So- oh, I'm not direct and I'm the best. Liar. <laughs> <laughs> Respect. Respect. I am. I'm very direct. Where I'm mm-hmm. like, if I like you, I like you. If I don't, I'm not mm-hmm. interested. Yeah. And oh, see, I don't like hurting people's feelings. So I would be like, I'm just like, I just am so busy. Like, I just have so much going on. Meanwhile, I'm like in bed. 
texting, I, like so busy. I guess I just wouldn't even talk to someone. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like I wouldn't let it get that far mm. if I wasn't See, interested. The other thing I do is I just don't answer, which is mm. horrible. But like I there's like I meet people every now and then. Like yeah. if I'm out at a bar and like meet somebody and then like that we trade numbers or whatever and then they'll text me and be like i'd love to get a drink sometime i just don't answer <laughs> mm. i just never <laughs> respond and hope i never see them again Fair. yeah it's that, horrible that would be me that's what i do but yeah sometimes you meet someone out in the wild and you're just caught in the moment mm -hmm. and then you think as soon as they text you or something you're like mm -hmm. hmm, wow wow Interesting that I yep. gave them my well, information. I just panic, and if someone asks me oh, for my yeah. number, I can't yeah, say no. I I do have I do, I can't yeah. say no, so I'll just block them. I guess <laughs> like, give it to them and block them. Yeah. Like thank God that's a feature. But the idea of someone yeah. being like, hey, yeah, we should trade numbers, or I should get your number, and me saying no, that's not happening. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah then you yeah. block. Then you yeah. gotta just give then it to them block. and block. That's you know, fair. or give them like the wrong number. Oh yeah, that's what that's I would do. That's the move. We're gonna start giving them caddies. Numbers. No. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Yeah, I just, I feel that. It is so hard to be like, no, no. I don't yeah. want to give you. Because then you get into a whole thing. I and know. You're like, I don't want to talk to you anymore. Oh, yeah, no. Yeah, it's not And good. I would probably give him an email. <laughs> an email is, so, that's a power No, move. but you can't have my email. <laughs> you can't have a business card. <laughs> or you just do the Instagram handle. Yeah, like yeah, Instagram. yeah. Oh, that's great. I know. Because it's like they'll find you anyway. Yeah. True. That's good. I know, but I just, it's someone, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. You're next. Oh, I lost my car. <laughs> <laughs> uh, something you're most excited about right now? Mm, Your record. Probably. My record. Yeah, I think that's what I'm most excited. Honestly, like, yeah, turning 30 and, and my record coming up feels like a big, mm -hmm. it's all in one week. So it's like, that's a big So week. crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. Like good things are ahead though absolutely i pray good things because, are ahead it's mm -hmm. been a trying long time coming it's been a long time coming mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah been alive for a lot of reasons. Yeah. yeah yeah all right last one if you weren't a singer what would you be i think about that like every day mm -hmm. because i'm such an escapist like i in needing to always have an exit i feel that way about life me too yeah so i'm always like this doesn't work mm -hmm. I would probably like go live. What I would want to do is sort of live on a farm or like a vineyard and just do something like garden, something where I can be outside and in nature and then sort of like doing, yeah, I don't know, working with a community garden, like just doing something in that world. Mm -hmm. If I literally, <laughs> if, my, if Molly, I'm scared. Molly and I are very close and she like needs me because I'm yeah. her manager and her whatever, mom and the whole thing. But sometimes I just want to say, screw it all. And I just want to go to Hawaii oh, yeah, and have a little place where mm -hmm. I grow my own food and have some chickens yep. and mm -hmm. smoke some weed <laughs> and feel the wind in my hair. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And like, I do see that for you. Kauai is just like, mm -hmm. that. I feel like it is who I am at my soul mm -hmm. is Kauai. I love that. And mm -hmm. like, I would love nothing more at some point in life to just be in Kauai. And yeah. living my life on my little farm, mm -hmm. waking and baking and <laughs> loving and living and just having the best time. I think it'll happen at I some think point. I think so, too. At some point, it'll happen. Yeah. I, and, yeah. And my husband loves to surf, and I feel like that's who he is, too. Like, we don't necessarily like many people. And so yeah. we just want our, just to go away and have our little thing. Yeah. And happen. I think so. I'm going to put yeah. it out to the universe. Mm -hmm. I think so. I think eventually we end up where we're supposed to I be so. i agree you'll with that. end up with chickens yeah. and i want just like a little two-bedroom cottage Ugh. somewhere i can see the water is that the best? it's not that much to it's not because i've put up with a lot of shit in my life. i i get it it's like eventually we'll be yeah we'll be living with chickens i'm headed there outside in, I, my, in my mind i'm headed there and at some point that's gonna happen so, yeah it will mm -hmm. yeah so where do you see yourself do you see yourself in california forever or no i don't know i think part of me will like maybe eventually i would like to get a house in arizona to like be there part-time because mm -hmm. i don't know family's there and mm -hmm. it's just like beautiful i love the desert and it's hot as hell mm -hmm. so it'd be like i wouldn't want to be there in the summer i don't mm -hmm. think but just to be in the desert and sort of like in that environment you know when you go i don't know if you feel this way about going home to like where you are from but i go to arizona and i feel like 
grounded. Yeah. Where I'm like, oh, I'm from here. And I feel it. When mm-hmm. I go to Kentucky and visit my best friends, so my friends mm-hmm. from high school. And so I'll go back to visit them and I feel like <clears throat> myself. Yeah. It's it's wild. I love it. You're just like on a cellular cellular level. Like, yeah. Oh, it is weird. I am from here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I feel it. It's crazy. I know. And I feel calm. So I do think eventually I would want to at least be there part time, but not full time. It's just so hot. It is yeah. so hot. <laughs> So, and it's only going to get hotter. So yeah. I'm like, mm-hmm. mm, I don't know. But eventually. And they could run out of water. They <laughs> actually. That. No, that's a big thing that I think about a lot where I'm like, there, a lot of people are moving to Phoenix. And I'm like, mm, I know they're all. Where's all your water? Yeah. It's crazy. One of my dearest friends, again, from one of my 80s friends, from <laughs> one of my rock and roll 80s <laughs> friends, Robin. <laughs> She's lived there for so long now. Oh, yeah. She loves it. Yeah. But it, she was like, it is hot. Last yeah. summer was insane i can't imagine it was like the hottest guys yeah. this summer is gonna be so fucking hot i'm just telling you right now we've had barely any winter in tennessee and it's already like 85 degrees and it scares me it's gonna be so yeah. hot well i'm scared that's what i'm thinking <laughs> Go to i'm beach. going to canada i'm going to canada yeah i honestly though like it's been raining so much in la oh, i know i'm kind of i know that it's good i love the rain me too mm-hmm. everything's so Everything's so I'm ready for it to be. I, I know. I had like a real depressed day a few weeks ago when it was raining. And I was like, ah, oh, everything's bad. Like everything's going wrong. And then it was sunny the next day. And I was like, no, it was just cloudy. I'm the exact same way too. Yeah. yeah. I, just, I really do truly have seasonal depression, I think. <laughs> yeah. I you just, live in LA. I know. I know. But, you live in Los it, Angeles when you don't have seasonal depression. Long. It counts. <laughs> That's why I have to live here. Exactly. Just, since you guys and are when nuts. it's raining, I immediately am in a sad mood. <laughs> yeah. Same. I can do like a few hours of rain and then after yeah. that I'm like, this is gonna have to stop. Yeah. Mm. I've had enough. Especially if I'm paying these taxes. If I'm paying these taxes. <laughs> I'm gonna need them to turn the off the rain. Get it together. We Somebody need to have turn enough this water off. somehow though. Exactly. Yeah. We need the water so- somehow. That is true, you know. But <clears throat> yeah. So funny. Well, I love her. This is a great Aww, episode. Casey, thank you, you so much you. for coming. Um thank you. all right, stoners. So Casey has new album dropping tomorrow. Bug. We're Yay! so excited about it. I can't wait to listen. Um, where can our listeners find you on Instagram and all the good things? I'm uh, at Casey Hill on Instagram, everywhere else, basically. Actually, I think on TikTok, I might have three L's on Hill. Um, yeah, Bug is out wherever you get music. Your music, yeah. And I'm so excited for everyone to hear it. I'm really excited for you. I, I'm you're telling amazing. you, you're on the up and up. In all, yes. in all aspects Thanks, of life. Yeah. Thanks, you guys. are for sure. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank um, you. Donors, make sure you guys are subscribing to the YouTube and telling all your friends and giving us five stars on Apple Podcasts. <laughs> when you leave a review, say what you want, but give us five stars. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we'll see you next week. Yep. Bye. Later, stoners. Bye. This podcast has been brought to you by Podcast Nation and Hopetown Entertainment.